Up till now, we've had Photoshop in a public beta working on the M1, but right now, as of this week, Adobe has finished feature complete, finished final Photoshop is now shipping native on the M1. So let me set you guys up for this video and you'll see the chapter markers so you can jump to the sections that you're interested in or watch it all the way through, it's up to you. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to install the full final version on the M1 MacBook Pro. Then we're gonna look at a series of just quick tests in Lightroom so we can just kind of get an idea of the eight versus the 16 in Lightroom. So then the main bulk of this video, we're gonna be running tests between the eight and the 16 gig versions of the MacBook Pro on the M1. And while we're mentioning that, we're also gonna look at the difference between the beta version, which I did the tests on previously, and the shipping version. So the first thing we wanna do is update. So in order to update, make sure you've got your Creative Cloud app installed. So you're gonna click on updates, then you're gonna click on these little ellipses and choose check for updates. This will force Photoshop to get the latest updates down to your computer. And then you'll see it there in the list under new updates, click update. So you'll see the Photoshop beta and above it, you'll see Photoshop and you'll see when it was updated and you'll see the open. So just click that open to launch Photoshop. Now you can safely uninstall the beta because it's not needed anymore and everything that was in there and more is inside the shipping version. Photoshop version 22.3 right now. It has all the features in there, even including the new features that were released this week, you know, the uh, super resolution. The only thing that's missing is the invite to edit. All right, so the two machines that we're gonna be comparing each other is the base MacBook Pro with eight gigs of memory and 256 gig drive. We're gonna be comparing that to the MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of memory but I also bumped up the drive from 256 to 512. The drive space is not really gonna affect the tests a lot, but it's just a more usable computer. 256 is not enough, I'm just gonna let you guys know. And by the way, I'm gonna give you buying advice at the end of this video, as well as what's coming in the M1s. So as far as encoding video, the 16 gig is slightly faster than the eight gig. There's not really a huge difference. So one of the things I did in Lightroom is I bought in 1,455 photographs, and then I built one-to-one -one previews on all of those. So the M1 with eight gigs of memory did that in nine minutes and 27 seconds. With 16 gigs of memory, it did it in nine minutes and six seconds. So not really a big change there, you know, slightly faster. Then I went and did another test with a 40 image HDR panorama shot from a drone. So this is some intensive processing. The eight gig version, it took it two minutes and 47 seconds to assemble it. The 16 gig assembled it in two minutes. Then when it came to the merging, the eight gig took one minute and 21 to merge it. And the 16 gig did it in 46 seconds. All right, let's jump into the stuff you really came here for, which is Photoshop. And so the first feature that I tested in Photoshop is that brand new super resolution, which is using AI to double the size of a photo. Well, actually it makes it four times larger as far as megapixels. And that can be a little bit time consuming. So to test that one, what I decided to do was put 10 images in there so the eight gig version took one minute and 31 seconds. The 16 gig version only took 51 seconds. So significantly faster there. Then I tested it with one massive panorama. So it's just a very, very large image. The eight gig version, it took it one minute and seven seconds. The 16 gig took one minute and three seconds. So not a big difference in that part. Okay, let's look at some previous tests that this time I ran on the 8 and 16 gig as well as the beta version versus the shipping version. So we took a multi-layered image with a lot of layers and then I exported those layers to files with a JPEG quality of 8. The 8 gig version uh, did it in 14.3 seconds. 
The 16 gig did it in about 14.3 as well. So it was about the same and no difference with the shipping version versus the dip beta. Let's do a big file test with lots of layers. So we're taking this image of mine. It's the Guitar City. It's a PSB, which is 3.6 gigabytes, which is nine and a half thousand pixels by 5.7 thousand pixels. So this is a 31 by 20 inches at 300 PPI and 68 layers, including smart objects, smart filters, and, uh, and some other things in there. So this is a complex file. So on each of these, I copied the files over onto the desktop, clean install, rebooted the computer, and then ran it that way. So we're not looking at external drives or anything like that. So the eight gig version opened this in 25.24 seconds. The 16 gig surprisingly opened this in only 13.78 seconds. So then I did a stamp visible to create a composite layer out of all the layers. The eight gig version took six seconds. The 16 gig version took three seconds. So that's half the time. Then I applied a smart blur to this. This is a radius of 50 threshold of 25 high quality and normal mode. They were around about the same time. The 13 inch eight gig took 56 seconds. The 16 gig took 55.49 seconds. And these speeds were about the same for the final build versus the beta. I wasn't really seeing a difference with that. Then I did a flip horizontal. The eight gig version did it in 48.93 seconds. The 16 gig version did this in 35.7 seconds, which is a lot faster. But then when I reran this on the final shipping version versus the beta, this only took 19 seconds. Then we did a resize 300% of this huge image by cubic uh, interpolation. And we took this to 28,000 pixels by 17,000 pixels as rounded up. And it also has smart filters that need to be re-rendered. So this is a huge task. So the eight gig version did this in three minutes and 52 seconds. The 16 gig version did this in three minutes and five seconds. So that's quite a bit quicker. But then when I reran this on the final shipping version, uh, Photoshop cut this down now to two minutes and 28 seconds on the 16 gig version. So that's a nice big increase in speed. So then at this point, I purged the memory to clear everything out, get everything nice and fresh, basically resetting it. And then I applied a radial blur at 100% at good quality. The eight gig version did this in one minute and six seconds. The 16 gig version did it in one minute and one second. So yeah, slightly faster, but not a big difference. And the final version versus the beta was about the same speed. Then I saved this out. So we saved this file to the hard drive, which is, you know, this massive file came to 19.65 gigabyte file. So almost a 20 gig file. The eight gig did this in five minutes and two seconds. The 16 gig version did this in four minutes and 35 seconds. And with the update, the final shipping version, it cut that down slightly to four minutes and 26 seconds. So the conclusion I'm seeing here is we are seeing some big speed increases for certain things on the eight versus the 16. And these are the areas that really they're going to be using memory, not so much the computational heavy stuff. So, you know, depending on what kind of work you're doing, you're going to find the eight versus the 16. We're definitely seeing some good speed increases. Also, you know, we can see some speed improvements. So even the beta version that you guys had, it's now quicker and obviously more stable now running natively on the final shipping version. Okay. So let's talk about the pricing of the configuration. The base model, is $1,299 plus tax. That's the eight gig of memory with 256 gig drive or SSD inside. Now, remember this is shared memory. So when you're using the memory, you're doubling that memory, you're essentially doubling what's available for RAM as well as what's available for GPU. So the $200 
to jump from eight to 16, it's gonna give you more GPU and more RAM. It's, it's a no brainer. I would say spend the $200, get the 16. So as far as internal storage, it's $200 to go from 256 to 512. I would say do it. Even though you might be able to get by in the 256, I've tried both and you just run out of space very quickly and, and it's, just, it's just not quite enough. The 512, you know, for light work, you're gonna get by with that pretty well as long as you're using, you know, external SSD drives and you can get, you know, SanDisk Extreme Disks very inexpensively and then using the Thunderbolt 3 USB-C. It actually works very snappy and, and I've actually been able to work off those drives very comfortably. Now, if you're feeling a little bit more spendy and this is gonna be your main computer that you're gonna be carrying around using a lot, then consider dropping the $400 to go to the one terabyte. Now the two terabyte is an additional $400 and personally, unless you're just dripping with cash, I wouldn't spend the money on that. I would stay to the one terabyte or the 512 and use external drives. All right, so there's a lot of rumors right now about what's coming next. And um, we know that there's the new MacBook Pros are coming later this year, we know that. We also know the iMacs are coming in M1. So this could happen either later this month, there's rumored there's an event. If not, there's gonna be WWDC in June. So a lot of what I'm hearing in the rumors is gonna be the second part of the year where we're gonna be seeing the iMacs and the MacBook Pros. But these are gonna be redesigns, and that was one of the things you know, in my first video when I talked about this, as I said, it's great, don't buy it. And the reason I said that is because this is using basically the same body and chassis from the Intel version. And now that it's got the M1, it's a smaller internal, and it's just more things they can do. Um, so the rumors are that they're coming out with a 12 and a 16 core, whereas this one currently right now is an eight core. We don't know what those are gonna go into, probably the IMAX. Uh, but the other thing that we also heard is it's gonna be like the uh, Q charging on here. So your iPhone, you're gonna, going to be able to put that on the new MacBook Pro and wirelessly charge it. But once again, you know, these are rumors, so we don't know for sure what's coming out. But um, so if you need it right now, you know, it's working great. Photoshop is working well, it's very snappy. And one of the things you don't really feel on the test is like, you know, Photoshop loads almost instantly and everything just feels very fast, very snappy, very quick. I'm gonna say, you know, if you care about a new chassis design, you know, maybe some newer features, um, maybe the touch bar might go away. There's, there's some things they're gonna, I've heard, maybe they're gonna put MagSafe on there, even rumors of a SD card reader. I don't believe that's gonna happen. I, I really would be surprised because, you know, now they're moving to CFast and different things. I would be really surprised if Apple puts, puts that in there, but you know, these are some of the rumors we've been hearing. So if you care about that kind of stuff, um, you know, you could wait, but you know, if you don't care about that and you just want to get up and running, I can actually say, you know what, now that Photoshop is final and it's shipping, it's working great. So what do you guys think? Are you going to jump in and get it? Or you've already got it. Um, you're going to wait a little bit for the next gen, or you're going to wait a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments underneath uh, what you guys think about all of this. And also, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any videos from me. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And oh yeah, I just wanna let you guys know, we mainly do you know Photoshop tutorials and stuff, and we've got a thing called the Photoshop Vault. If you go to photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault, I've got a ton of goodies I'm gonna give you guys right there. Um, you can download uh, actions, presets, LUTs, eBooks. Uh, I've got a packet of skies there, you know, like images of skies you can use in sky replacement, cheat sheets, super guides, and more. It's all free, photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.